Stopp! Stopp! Hi, how you doing? Identification. I'm sorry, I forgot my identification here at home, but, you know, you know me. Sarducci nicht haben Identification. No papier. Hey, I'm sorry, you know, I forgot my papier at home, and my show starts in 10 minutes, I'm the host. Identification. Call Mancini Duffy, all right? Call, call Mancini Duffy on the phone, would you please? He'll vouch for me. I can't believe this. Monsignore Duffy, per favor. I know, it's because I wrote that article, right? That's it? You guys are just vindictive. Pronto, Duffy. Monsignore, ich habe hier einen Brister mit der ID. Non avere identificazione. Nome? No, you know me. Come on. Sarducci, you know. Sarducci. See, you, you lied. That's a mortal sin. They say that the streets of the hell are lined with the souls of a Swiss guard for lying all the time and lying. I'll tell you this, I will never ever again eat your cheese. Why didn't you let him in? You know him. You can vouch for him. Of course, you know him. Come on, not to them, not to them. Who ever heard of an army knife with the scissors in his side anyway? What's that, in case you get a hanging nail in battle? Save you a trip to the medic? Did they start the meeting without me, Monsignor Duffy? Yes, they did. There's been some changes made since you've been gone. Did they put their couch in my dressing room like I asked them to? I don't know for sure, but I doubt it. You can't imagine how I feel, Monsignor Duffy. My own show, I'm so excited. You're a host, that's me. I can't believe it. Guido, there's been some big changes made since you've been gone. Did they change the story about the monk who's uh, translating the Vanuatu autobiography into Latin? No, not that. I thought they would drop that. It's a piece of junk. I got a pulp of mementos for everybody, Monsignor. They're going to love them. Guido, Guido, I got to talk to you. I got to talk to you, too. I want to tell you all about my trip. Mm -hmm. I'm back, everybody. Suwani, Suwani's a river. What is this, a touch of tumor on here or what? I got a poke of stuff for everybody. Sister, look, it's a flag for you. <coughs> Sister, I got it for you, fan. I'm a hot, I'm a hot. That's and uh, Father Murray, look, you won't believe this. So look what it is. Get it, the Pope. Thanks, Father. I got a t-shirt, could you spread them around, Sister? One per nine. Oh. Sister, I didn't know what to get you, but the National Guard gave me this for lunch. Maybe you have a nice little snack or something. And the sister, I think you're gonna like it. It's the slippers, don't wear them out. <gasps> Okay, everybody, 10 minutes of the show starts. So warm up your sets. It's going to be great. Wish me luck, sis. This is my big day. I know how you feel. I'm excited myself. I can't believe it. I'm sorry I'm late, everybody. How you doing? Welcome back. Thank you. Monsignor Spellman said you had some problems on the Pope's tour. Yeah, I had a problem. Monsignor Spellman is the problem. We got to get a new guy working for us in the States. That guy Spellman, he's useless. Do you have the tape? All right, they got it right here. It's all here. By Subito al Control Room, Sorella. Uh, as I was saying, I think we have a very strong first show. Yeah, it's got some weak spots, mm. but on the whole, as the first show, I think we're on the right track. <laughs> Father Caponata, I love the story on the Pitbull Rest Home. It's wonderful, but I'm not going to lead with it. Frankly, there's something I don't understand. Uh, you say every Monday night is pizza night at the Pitbull Rest Home, but we don't see any pizza. Why didn't you tape on Monday night? Well, you know, it's not like they give us light to each dog. What they do is cut a pizza up in small pieces. They mix it with their dog food. You see? <laughs> it's not so romantic as it sounds. <laughs> well, I think there's something missing. I think I'm going to start with the story of the Capuchin monk. Here's what I think of it. <coughs> Excellent. They were a wonderful job, sister. It's excellent. Thank you. I am also dropping the story 
of the priest who was swallowed by the snake. It's just not right for a first show. What? Are you out of your mind? That's the best part of the whole thing. The world's smallest priest gets swallowed by a snake. You can't top that. It's just a little strange for a first it. show. I think that's putting it mildly. <laughs> I get it. You're the one that's been lobbying against this. I knew it was us. You're the one. It's a disgusting story, especially that part about how he got out. At least it's real. At least it's real. It's not about some, some nut up in the mountains who doesn't know Vanna White from Mr. Ed. Who right. said in the book anyway? You, you set this whole thing up! That's it. Please, Father Fuso, I didn't say that it isn't an exciting story. I just said it's not right for the first show. I hate this. Listen, we are going to have him on the show next week. Ask him if he can stay over. Monsignor Duffy arranged for him to stay at the Swiss Guard Barracks. Oh! But the member swallowed by his neck. And you are going to put him up in the Swiss Guard Barracks? Is this some kind of comparison test? Wait a minute. You want me to tell him he's off the show? Duffy's the hatchet man in this zoo. Why I get all that dirty work? Father Fuso, if I am not mistaken, you wanted to be the talent coordinator. Yeah. Now all of our jobs have their difficult moments. <coughs> That's it. I quit. I've had it. I've had it. That's it. I'm sorry. I'm, well, I'm sorry. sorry too, you know, but he said he could get on next week's show. You know, you should he could get on next week. Guido, how long is your report on jet lag and the Pope? Twelve minutes, exactly. Twelve minutes? <laughs> That's awfully long, isn't it? It's not long, it's a short. It's less than three minutes a city. It's fine. Uh, it's a little long, but it's too late to edit it it's now. It's not long, it's not long. It's too late to edit it now. Uh, Sister Celita, I love, I love the theme song. Molte That's bene, molte bene. Monsignor Tremonti, could you please read the introduction more quickly? No. Fine, just keep doing it the way you're doing it. It's fine. Excuse me, so, is dropping the story about the priest who got swallowed by a snake the only cut in the show? I thought you said there were some big changes. Let's break this meeting up now and get back out there into the studio. Guido, please stay. Monsignor Duffy, can you stay too, please? You didn't tell him. I told you to tell him. I tried to tell him many times. Tell me what? You know what I told you to tell him, and I know what I told you to tell him. I know, I know what this is about already, and the answer is no. You want the Sister Mary Carmel to be co-host, right? I was a promised host, not co-host, host. That's it. I'm the host, no co-host. Guido, there is no co-host. All right, so what's the problem? Monsignor Duffy, would you close the door, please? No! TV c'è pure quel programma che difende noi che fa la spesa. Vivi de tutti, è il più succoso. Come è meglio così? From its founding in 1946. Oppure, from its founding in 1946. Why does he have to make such a big deal out of the pizza? No, la seconda è meglio. No, la prima! È la seconda. Andiamo! Attenzione, se gira! Cinque seconde! Cinque! Quattro! Tre! Due! Uno! From its founding in 1946, for the exclusive purpose of reporting European flying saucer sightings, the Vatican Inquirer has grown into an internationally distributed publication, printed in four languages, emphasizing the bizarre, the unusual, the strange, and the supernatural. Tonight, the Vatican Inquirer takes another leap forward.
Tonight, the Vatican Inquirer comes to your television screens exclusively on Vatican Cable Network. Ladies and gentlemen of the English-speaking world, the Vatican Inquirer of the Air. And now, here is your host, Mr. Medical Mel. Thank you, Monsignor Tamanti, and thank you, Sister Cielita. And welcome, one and all, to the Vatican Inquirer of the Air. This is our premiere show, and we look forward to bringing you many exciting stories throughout the coming months. And I'm sure you'll find our first show is no exception. We'll be visiting a monk who's translating Vanna White's autobiography into Latin. We'll also be visiting a pit bull rest home. Or is it a pit bull penitentiary? We'll hear both sides. And Father Guido Sarducci reports on jet lag. Tonight's top story takes us to a remote mountain monastery in the Abruzzi province of Italy. The Capuchin monks living there have been translating manuscripts for hundreds of years. But one monk is working on a translation much different from that of his colleagues. Father Franco Quagenti's task may be on the lighter side of Gregorian translation, but it's difficult nonetheless. Avante! Avante! Welcome to the show, Father. We didn't know whether you liked Taroni or Bacci, so we brought both candies. I don't eat commercial candy. I make my own. So, yours is an extraordinary story, Father. Just extraordinary. Tell me, Father, was it very dark inside the snake? Yes, of course. I wanted to know, how did you get out? With my... Clipper! So you clipped your way out, huh? Yes! Tell me, what happened to the snake? That happened to the snake! And that happened to the snake! And that happened to the snake! <laughs> uh, uh, I, I'm... I'm... Afraid we have some mixed news for you, Father. Tell him, Duffy. You won't be in this show this week, but you'll be in the next show next week for sure. That was you think. And so we say goodbye to the pit bull dog rest hall. Goodbye, pit bull. Thank you, Father Cabanata, for a delightful report. And I understand that the dogs even occasionally get a special treat at the rest home. Mm, that's right. Mandy's Pizza Eye at the Pity Ball Rest Home. <laughs> it sounds as though those dogs have it made. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with Father Guido Sarducci after this short message from our friends at Vivi, the makers of Vivi tomato paste and pellets. A tavola, la pasta è pronta. Mm, che che bella. It's amazing how somebody gets to be a host nowadays, isn't it, Father? Yeah. Guess all you gotta do is just hang around in the main office, brown and nosing up with the producer, stabbing your coworkers in the back all the time while they're out busting in themselves, saying for what? To get stabbed in the back? Guess I should have gone to the convent, went to the wrong school. Ritorniamo fra cinque seconde. Tre, due, uno. We're back, and we have a special treat, Father Guido Sarducci. Welcome, Father. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. That's a good one. Welcome to my own show. <laughs> Gotta remember that one. Gotta write that one down. I understand your report concerns jet lag. That's right. Just about everybody knows that the Pope is just about the most frequent traveler in the world. And who is a better person to ask about the jet lag than His Holiness himself? And that's what I've been trying to do for months and months. You'd think somebody here at this wonderful publication could get me just five minutes alone with the man for an interview about the jet lag. But no such luck would take me only about five minutes to walk to the papal offices from here. But instead, I was forced to go on the road with a herd of other reporters and chase him halfway around the world to ask him one question 
about the fascinating subject of jet lag. Does he get it? And if yes, what does he do about it? The Pope's trip to the United States of America was the 36th foreign sojourn trip of his pontificate so far. And it makes me tired just thinking about having to pack them many times. But the flight was a definitely first class all the way. And it, they even gave Cardinal Fungi and myself slippers. It's not easy for a 112 year old man to go on the road. But his being a Cardinal opens a lot of doors for me. The movie was a ring tin tin. I'd never seen it, but I was not interested in watching it now, since it was dubbed in Polish. Instead, I decided to interview a man who should know all about the jet lag, the Pope's personal pilot, Father Stasz Kaminski. Vatican Inquirer! Vatican Inquirer! Quick, we have the interview! Right. In Miami, the Pope was met by thousands, including the President and Mrs. Ronald Reagan and myself. His welcome was overwhelming. And Cardinal Fungi, my crew and myself, was met by Monsignor Willibor Spellman, the Vatican Inquirer's U.S. Miami-based media relations director. Well, this is Biscayne Boulevard, a very famous road here in Miami. Cardinal Fungi, you might have recognized this from watching Miami Vice. It felt wonderful to be in Miami. Everybody was so excited about the Pope to visit. It was a Pope mania everywhere he looked. Monsignor Spellman really knew his way around Miami. Everybody seemed to know him. Monsignor Spellman, good evening. Very good, very good. Welcome back so soon, sir. Thank you. Sure, you're playing Monsignor Spellman. Hiya, Jeffrey. How are you? Okay. Can you do my radio program, man? I mean, it would well, be great if you came on the program. Uh, I'll have to think about it. I'll get back to you. All right. Thank okay. You. Justin, Justin, Justin. How you doing? Thanks a lot for the envelope. That's very It was very generous. Thank you. Thank you. Jeannie, you're looking lovely. Thank you. Nice. Mm. Uh, Estelle, Estelle. How nice to see you again. Spellman really knew how to work a room. Listen, let's have and he really knew his way around to all the restaurants. But when it came a time for him to get us press passes to get in to see the Pope, was another matter all together. And we ended up having to see the Pope on television in our hotel room. Nor can it ever consist in material comfort and security, the fulfillment that comes from our ministry, does not in the final analysis consist, consist in the Pope's the next stop after Miami was Columbia, South Carolina. But since no, Monsignor Spellman also neglected to get press credentials for there, we went ahead to wait for him in San Antonio, Texas. Hey, look, look who's here, look! Saluti! Tanti saluti! Oh, thank you very much. Uh, listen, could I have another piece of this pumpkin pie? Just yes, put sir. it onto the bill. Hey, why don't you get it this time, all right? What do you say? I got it the last time. No, you did not get it last time. Well, I'll get it the next time. You said it the last time. Well, I'll get it the next time. Right. I see this to believe it, I think. I can't believe this. Monsignor you know, Spellman was ahead. getting to be somewhat of a burden, and I didn't mind at all that he didn't want to get up early and go with me so I could get a good spot to ask the Pope my question at the Alamo. Oh, boy, it's early, isn't it? Uh, Kemp, you guys have to get it. What time did you get here this morning? Four o'clock in the morning. Four o'clock. So you've been here three hours already, and I just got here. I thought I was going to be the first. You guys beat me here, huh? And when did the Pope, what time will the Pope be by about? Not till what? 5.30. So we got a long, long wait. Ladies and gentlemen, Pope John and Paul are the two. Look, it's coming by the Alamo. This is a great avenue here to be sitting on. This is a terrific look. Look, this is the Pope. There he is, this is it. The only this is jet lag, jet lag. Jet lag, how do you do? Jet lag, what do you do? Yes, he, he was, I think he can't hear me. He's in the, uh, in the, the guy in the class. He couldn't hear. I think he couldn't hear me because the glass was so thick, you know? He could, I couldn't see him, but he was like, I couldn't see he was straining to hear me. He couldn't hear. 
I didn't know you could not hear through the pop mobile. This is a bomber. In Los Angeles, we were fortunate enough to be able to stay with a friend of mine and to save us some money on laundry and hotel bills. Hey, Tony. Hey, Tony, we're ready. We're all set, I think. Hey, thanks for doing this interview. I know, you know, maybe didn't want to do it, but I appreciate it. So, Dino, we're ready? Okay. Hey, I am here with the great Tony Bennett. And first of all, I want to say, Tony, thank you. I uh, really appreciate you letting Cardinal Fungi, uh, Mancini Spellman, and the rest of my crew stay here at your home. It's all right. And also, I know, you know, the, you know, you said that you wash and dry down in the fridge, whatever you say, whatever it was. But uh, we did wash some stuff out in the sink. I know you saw this, so... Uh, it's all right, it's okay, all right. Okay, we put it in the backyard, okay. Anyway, uh, Tony, maybe you want to say hello to the people in the television's land? Maybe there's some advice you want to give to people, some? Yeah, I'd like to advise the people out there that if uh, anybody calls you 4 o'clock in the morning, don't answer it. I called too late, huh? Uh, you know. I thought you would still be up partying and everything. You know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, let's just tell you. Here's what I want to ask. I didn't know it was so late. Uh, here's what I want to ask you. I'm going to be meeting with the Pope in the next day or two. Wow. And I'm going to be able to ask him, ask him a question. And what I would like to do uh, is ask you the same question I'm going to ask His Holiness, if you wouldn't mind. Fine, go ahead. Okay. Tony, you travel all around the world, uh, Asia, Europe, Canada, uh, where else? South America? Everywhere. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. You must have run across a jet lag. What I want to ask you is what do you do about the jet lag uh, when you get it, if you get it? You do get it? Yeah, well, I, what I do on a plane is I don't eat too much. I, uh, I drink a lot of water. And uh, I, I also uh, play a lot of tennis before I get on the plane so that I might sleep. You know, so I, I, this way it eliminates hey, a lot of... Hey, yeah. Tony, this toothbrush is great. Where do you get one of these things? Unfortunately, we were only able to bye stay bye. at Tony's house for one That's night good. as he had relatives coming to visit him the next day. Also, unfortunately, Spellman told me that in L.A. the Pope was going to be in a convertible, so it would be easy for me to ask him my question. Where is, he? Where is, it? Where is it, the Pope? Right there he was. <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> that was Where's it? the Pope, my baby? <laughs> you, the Pope. you said he was going to be in a convertible. Not a convertible. I said he wasn't going to be in a Pope. I said he was going to be in a limo. Hello, Father. Hello, how you doing? I thought the Pope was going to be in a convertible, they said to me. Just for L.A. No. They said he was going to be a convertible. Was that him who went by? That was him. I just saw him went to so quick. That was him. Hello, Father. Hello, Father. My spend some money was running low, so we decided to take the bus from L.A. to Frisco. Spellman said the hotel was in walking distance of the bus station, but it was wrong as usual. Wong Hotel. I sure don't. No, did he? I'm a stranger. Oh, okay, thanks. You know where the Sam Wong Hotel? The Sam Wong Hotel. Sam Wong Hotel. Sam Wong. Yeah. Sam Wong. Yeah. Sam Wong Hotel is where it is. Yeah, to North Beach. In North Beach? That way. That way. You sure? There's an only W energy. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. There's no Sam Wong Hotel. How many times do we have to do it? No, everybody says that they know, but they Spell can't. Spell right. W-O-N-G. How, how are you going to spell it? Could be a U. With a C? Excuse me. Uh, do you know where is it? Uh, this place is called Sam Wong Hotel. Oh, sure, that's easy. You go down here about three blocks, and then you go right. left about four blocks, then Wait. you go north about 20 blocks. So which way is north? Which way? What do I look like? A seagull? Uh, I would like some Pellegrino water, please. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. You pay? I'm not paying for it. Okay, I'll get it. Okay, I'm not paying anymore. Okay. Could you tell me, please, where is uh, you know this uh, called a uh, hotel, Sam Wong Hotel? Oh, I don't know where that is. You never heard of it? Oh, lost. This is nothing. That guy, he said 20 blocks. Ah, uh, done. We did 16 now. There's only right. four more, and then we're gonna go, gonna go north. You know it all. You know it all. You know where it is. You know, I'm not. You know where 
is it the same wall the hotel? Oh, this here? Oh, here. Okay, look. It's right in here. Thank you. Thanks a lot. The next morning, I recruited the Sam and myself to help me find the ideal spot to rendezvous with the Pope. I had one last chance to ask the Pope my question, and I decided to pull out all of the stops. I decided to use the old Polish flag trick. Well, this is it. It won't be long now. The Pope John Paul II will be coming by here. I'm with my friend Sam. We have brought some uh, Polish flags, which I know will stop the Pope cold in his track. He's going to pull right over here. I'm going to jump over this and ask him my question about the jet lag. Sam, you know to uh, Sam, you know you should uh, hold the flag up, wave it. So yeah. we want to get his attention. Yeah. And then when he stops, when he stops. Uh, then I'll jump out there, okay? Okay. Okay. This is it, the Pope's mobile. Okay, Sam. He didn't stop, though. He didn't stop. He didn't stop. But all in all, it was a successful trip investigating the fascinating subject of jet lag. I'm sorry, I, I didn't quite get that. What was the conclusion again? Well, the conclusion was, uh, like Tony Bennett said, drink a lot of water and play tennis. And the Pope? I feel that Tony Bennett is much more of an expert on jet lag than the Pope. I mean, after all, Tony Bennett's been traveling around the world for years and years, and the Pope has only been a Pope for nine years, nine lousy years. Thank you, Father Sarducci, for a most insightful report. It was a fine attempt. No problem. Well, that's it, folks. We hope you enjoyed our show, and we hope you'll tune in next week when we'll be talking to a priest who was swallowed by a snake and lived to tell us about it. Till then, ciao.